The no, Maldives, Maldives will be underwater. They're, they're, the, you, you show it on, on. Well, no, I believe yeah, you. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But if you see the Google image of the Maldives and how it looks, it's it's crazy. It's like years away from basically. Well, under- they're trying to they're trying to purchase another set of islands to move the people there. Yeah. That's oh my goodness. What is it? Half a million people or something I like that? Know, I don't know the population. Makes me makes me happy that I sold uh, my, a little parcel I once owned in Turks and Caicos. <laughs> I know that it's only elevated like at, at like fifty meters at its highest peak. <laughs> The Todd Shapiro Show. Brad J. Lamb is here, torontocondos.com, our, our expert, our dragon, our, our uh, famous uh, realtor and, and developer and mortgager. You do everything. What, 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 you open up a new business today? You open up your hotel yet? I opened up a porn website today. You're just- <laughs> <laughs> That's my new business. <laughs> It's the best internet business there is. I love you, man. Because <laughs> I'm not sure. Did you? Did you? No, no. no. But you, absolutely but, not. I'm kidding. Oh, that's a business, though, man. It's a great business. That's a this, great yeah. business. It's amazing, right? Because you see, you know, every year there'll be like the top 10 hit websites, and they don't include what the porn ones would be there because there would be 10 more that were more hit that are actually yeah, porn Yeah, because it would be five times more hit than the other ones. Did we have the conversation about uh, YouTube, how Pornhub's like YouTube now? I forget if I had that with you. Did, no. Porn stars now, the way they get paid is like YouTube stars where they put up their video on purpose and they get hit, they get paid based on views because of the ads that go in front of those oh, videos yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's it's like they've just sort of adapt, uh, adopted that whole kind of philosophy. Porn stars. Porn stars, <laughs> right? Really? Is there such a thing as a porn star? I think so now. Really? They got some clout. Because because of their social media followings, right? So right. they you know they get a couple of million people following them, and they can work with kind of sort of mainstreamish sponsors. Will sometimes take risks in them and stuff, and and, and do some stuff. It's, it's would you ever have one represent? No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> that was no it's a fine business, but it's not for me. <laughs> it's not. It's fair enough. Uh, Blue Jays, man. I mean, we were talking about the Blue Jays last week. Uh, super exciting stuff. Um, they play the Indians uh, on Friday night, and uh, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, they're just uh, you think I'm they'll get to the World sure Series? I'm not sure you're allowed to call them the Indians. I friend. know. Am I not allowed? Because Jerry Howarth isn't. Am I not allowed to? He's say not allowed to come. This is JJ Lieberman, by the way. Brad J. Yeah. Lamb co-hosting hey, today. How are you? Yeah, they're they're they're. Yeah, I mean, some people are saying that. Do you think that's an offensive term? Calling apparently them? going to the mound and having a powwow is also offensive, and the tomahawk chop. Yep, you can't do the yep. Who's saying you can't? Who's saying you can't say it like in Dude, the world? The general world, man. It's it's not uh, because it's disrespectful to to Indians. No, but I'm saying then who who? But wh- who's saying like uh, uh, he can't say it on the fan? Or? No, no, no. He's 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 just opted to to. I think he said twenty years ago or something. He boycotted. I think it was with the Atlanta Braves. When yeah. Was a, I think that when the Blue Jays beat the Atlanta Braves in the last World Series, they won. He said he stopped doing because a writer or a fan wrote in. Uh, mm-hmm. I think a, a um, yeah, I think a, a fan wrote in, and and, uh, and and they were of that uh, heritage, mm-hmm. and uh, they said it would be great if people didn't uh, make that reference. So I think he's he's decided not to. But I don't know. I I mean I I guess it's not my place to say, but you know my wife said something to me yesterday because she she my my wife's like the most innocent person in the world, and she goes. Do you find it offensive if someone were to call you like, like you know, the Jews, the Jew, like, you know, you're, and I'm like, no, no, I don't think that's like a big deal at all. If someone said, look at the Jews. And then I like Googled Jews to see if that was like, now if there were Jewish people who would be, think that was derogatory. And no, like even because it's Yom Kippur, they're like, Jews celebrate Yom, Yom Kippur. So I, I don't know, I guess. It makes what make what makes me I, I you know I guess I don't know enough about the heritage and about, enough about you know uh, the, the the you know the native community and stuff, but. When I think of the term, when I personally think of it, I, I don't think of it as, as anything rude because I never think no, of but anyone. I think, I think the word Indian, yeah, is is oh, I know the word Indian is not acceptable in in reference to to that ethnicity of people. Okay, okay, yeah, you're not supposed to call uh, um, them Indians. Anyway. Then why don't they just change? Should they just go and change the name of the sports franchise? Well, I think that's been. I think the Redskins has also mm-hmm. been under. Uh, yeah stress for that and and uh, maybe maybe so maybe so but i think the reason why they don't is because there's this 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 uh this lore of history that that you know then you're gonna then you're gonna antagonize certain fans that say that's you know bullshit mm. i don't know i think i think it actually is important to uh if 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 uh if we're doing with every other 
uh, culture than we should do with the Indians. Oh, I, sorry. No, <laughs> the <Indians>. no. <laughs> but I know what you mean. You're not. I, it, I don't mean the Indians. I mean the uh, actually the native. Yes. yes native, the native. Native Americans, I guess. Is yes. The, proper the Native American. You know, and, and I. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, Brad, I don't, I don't no, think. I know that. I said a brain freeze. I just looked at him and he. But listen, it's still. It. But you see the Indians. I mean, it's at Indians on Twitter. Like you know, like yeah. I, it's 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 a, one of those very confusing things where there is nothing insulting about it if you don't mean it to be insulting. You know, it's just it's just unfortunate the name. I, I think just the word itself is not not acceptable anymore. Like so many other things, you can't call people. Well, did you hear? Uh, here's a good thing that I heard the other day, or just yesterday. So there's all these creepy clowns running around North America. I heard, you heard? That, yeah, yeah. So now McDonald's, and I don't know if this is a PR move or not, Brad, but McDonald's said, we're going to hold back on Ronald's appearances because we don't want to condone creepy. So basically they're admitting that he's a fucking creepy clown. Yeah, he is a creepy. <laughs> <He's> have, <laughs> you, have you seen the, the TV show The Following? No, I never seen it. So, it, so it's Kevin Bacon's in that, and and I forget the English guy that's in. He's like a, the English guy's like a psychopath, and he incites people to follow him in his murderous sprees. And and part of it was getting clowns to stab and murder people in the streets of New York and elsewhere. And is it, so, I, I someone told me about this, and I haven't seen that much about it. So, has anyone been injured? No one's been injured, and I saw one video where where I don't know if it was like a, a fake one that buddies just wanted to go viral and stuff. But did, I don't know if you saw the one, Paul or JJ, where where a dude's kind of filming. It's actually in Toronto, and a dude's filming a, a creepy clown, and then he comes in and starts like running at him with a bat, and the guys run away and they get away from him. So it looked like a bit kind of Blair Witches, but which, oh. but I don't know if that's Paul. Yeah, jump in here. There was also another incident in Toronto where a guy dressed as a creepy clown ran after kids oh, at a shit. school, and there were seven kids running away from a guy dressed dressed as a clown as well. So that guy should be punched right in the head and like uh, repeatedly. Oh, repeatedly I'd, loved, by their I'd love to see that happen. I would just I would just pound on that guy. Right. You don't don't mess with the chill. Well, it'd be interesting what's going on. What will happen around Halloween now? Yeah. I don't know. Weird stuff. It's eh? weird. Yeah, well, yeah. the world's weird. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you, you have a vision for this world. Where are we going to be in twenty years, Brad? You're <laughs> you, the guy that. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, I want to no, follow. You don't no, I want to follow. <laughs> I want to live in your bunker. Is what I wanted, or or high up upon one of your your, your bulletproof towers or something. <laughs> There's some terrific books you can read about about the future. What's a good example of one? You know, I knew you were going to ask me that after I said that, and I. I <laughs> <laughs> there's there's one book. Uh, that I, I've, I've, uh, I often start like five or six at a time. And, uh, I, I, so um, next time I'm on the show, I'll tell you, then it's fantastic. It tells you how to survive after an apocalypse. Wow. And, and it, 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 it tells you all the things like, like, uh, like drying meat so that you can eat it, like desiccating meat. So it's, it's healthy Cured. to eat. Curing Cured. meat. Yeah. Um, curing fish, uh, how to make clothing, uh, how to skin a hide. I mean, it's crazy. Everything you need to know to restart civilization, a lot of things we know, so we can start on the back of where we're at today. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen, but we're going in a bad direction. We definitely are going in a bad direction. And one of the biggest problems that I don't think people have any clue about is is, uh, is global warming is real, and uh, it's going to flood the coasts of every country in the world. And we're, we're, we're looking at probably uh, conservatively 200 to 500 million people being seriously affected. I mean, seriously to possibly that could be the death count, but it's going to be massive and it's not going to happen slowly. It's going to happen quickly. Do you remember when New York flooded? Yes. Remember, yep. Yep. Do you remember when Toronto flooded? Yes. <laughs> okay. So our sewer system is inadequate for the rain we get here. Our sewer system is so inadequate that they're now taxing people like me, developers for putting in groundwater into the system. Just in the last year and a half, they've created a new, a new program where we get taxed. The condo building gets taxed for every kilogram of water they release into, into the sewers. Never happened before because the sewers are inadequate. We need to rebuild them all. There are still some wooden sewers in Toronto. Jeez. Wooden sewers. Is that what they're doing on like Richmond Street? You see what the, the on Richmond, there's that. They're digging up something right at L Richmond and Queen to Richmond and... Uh, have you seen that, that big construction? Could be, could be. So we often fund short runs of new sewers and things as a developer. Um, and that could be, it could be streetcar too. How deep is the hole? 
Uh, well, it's not it's not street car because there's no street car on Richmond, so oh, it's just. Enough. But it's not super deep though, so. Right. But uh, yeah, could be it could be hydro, hydro trunks. Mm. It, it depends on who who's doing the work. Uh, that's an interesting question. See, this is stuff I would never ever 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 think of in my life, and and not just New York or Toronto, like the, you know, urban center centers that are really really growing as well. Like it, it, what the infrastructure of how they've been built for over the last couple hundred years, like. There's got to, I guess, like, there's got to be a complete makeover for a lot of these cities, essentially. Every city. So so there are some cities that are more on top of it. Toronto probably is 30 years behind. We, we, we are, so is the problem with when you're in, when you're not a, a coastal city, not meaning not a lakefront city, but a, a like an oceanfront city where the, tot, where the, you're going to really see the, the oceans rise and that'll affect the, the water levels in the cities. But in a city like Toronto, it's rain, Right. It's bad storms. If we get too much rain, a flash flood, the sewers can't take the water and it floods the city. And, and that's where you get problems. The, f the floods could last for days and days or weeks if it's that bad. can shut down traffic, can shut down the power, can shut down the supply of fresh water. And then you have problems like cholera and, you know, all sorts of terrible things that can happen. And, and now this has never happened in Toronto. But, but I'll tell you, in New York City, there was a long period of time. I forget exactly how many weeks, but it was weeks or parts of New York City were underwater. And this was like five years ago. Lower East Side, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Mal well, well, and then Jersey was affected of, uh, just yeah. a couple of years ago, yeah. right? Because yeah. everyone Well, remembers. look at the Maldives. <laughs> have you have you seen that? The, the Maldives? Maldives will be underwater. They're, they're, the, you, you show it on... on well, no, I believe uh, you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But if you see the Google image of the Maldives and how it looks, it's it's crazy. It's like years away from basically... And they're trying to they're trying to purchase another set of islands to move the people there. Yeah. That's oh my there, what is it, half a million people or something I like don't that? Know, I don't know the population. Makes me, it makes me happy that I sold uh, my, a little parcel I once owned in Turks and Caicos. I know that it's only <laughs> elevated like at, at like 50 meters at its highest peak. Like that, that probably won't you're exist. Okay with, you're probably okay with 50 meters. I don't think the oceans are going to okay. rise in, in our lifetime more than 10 or 15 feet, which is a disaster anyway. That's, wow, that's, that's that, a massive amount of... Um, uh, the, the global warming statement you made, uh, it, it, Trump obviously is sort of like one of these deniers of it and, and doesn't, yes. you know, thinks it's a bit of a hoax and everything. Right. I, is this one of really, like, you know, you, you see a lot of celebrities get behind this issue, but is this one of the, like, the most singular type of issues what the more of the public should really start to really truly understand and try and make a difference because yes. we can help it right it's the number one issue really because so there are other issues like like education and food delivery people starving and unemployment and inequities in wealth and so on but but this is a leveler of everything it's going to affect everybody and 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 it'll affect the sources of food far beyond you know pestilence and 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 uh you know and and People hoarding things to drive prices up. This this is a a, a, a game changer for humanity. If it happens the way um, it's most uh, scientists who believe, you know, there's 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 the deniers and the believers, and more believers and deniers. But if it happens the way most believers uh, uh, have pro prognosticated, it's going to be a disaster for us. Um, do, do you like what are simple things that that we can that that people can do? Just stop to, driving cars, turn off your lights. Yeah, take, just like the biggest issue is is consuming power, right? Anything that creates carbon dioxide. So, you know, funny there's a there's a there's a, a guy that used to be a big petrochemical um, uh, CEO. His name's Gwyn Morgan. He used to run in Canna. I think it was in Canna, um, and he retired several years ago. Now he writes in the Globe, and the guy's brilliant. He's a he's he's a very well spoken well-educated man he was he was he's always talking about the, the the lunacy of of the of the side that believes that electric cars are the answer because electric cars can be the answer but it depends on how you charge your car if you charge your car in, a, in an area in the world where car where electricity is generated by burning coal then it's worse to drive an electric car than a gas car because you're consuming coal and coal is the single worst thing for co2 emissions so the problem with the, with with uh Brad, a little closer mike sorry sorry thank you sorry, sorry to interrupt the, the problem with consumers is is that they're not they're not well informed and i i don't think they understand all the science behind it um and and that's something that that uh, and, and unfortunately because most politicians don't most politicians in the world don't want us to be that informed about this because it's not good speaking of politicians uh yesterday afternoon city mayor john tory announced he's going to be cracking down on developers and their requests and demands to block lanes during construction and the process of it w will his new regulations affect you on any of the projects that you do and and uh what do these new regulations really mean 
Okay, well, this is actually kind of a hot topic for me because he went on uh, on CP24, uh, and and uh, I was a scapegoat for that. They they actually closed my project down. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And so actually, on on we were expecting our uh, lane closure permit. The only way to build a building in the city of Toronto uh, that's mid block and um, is is zero setback, meaning that the building takes the entire parcel, right? Which a lot of buildings in Toronto do, is you have to get a lane closure because there's no way to deliver products to the site. Like if you deliver rebar or concrete, the truck can't hover over the site and deliver concrete. I've seen it my whole life in downtown, never thought twice about it. It's the truth, just because I watched yeah. stuff being built. And, well, yeah. if we had some helicopters, we could maybe you know change that. But that's just, you can't fly helicopters in the city of Toronto either. So it's just impossible to do it any other way. And, you know, this is a traffic mayor, and uh, he's, uh, you know, of the opinion that developers are, are, are sort of willy-nilly closing streets of thought, right? So on, on we we're expecting our permit on Thursday, and uh, we we're well advanced to have to have it without shutting down the site. City's well aware of our need. Uh, we've, we've been at it for a year and a half to get this permit. Yeah, uh, we were promised it on three different occasions. Finally, it was granted by council. It was granted by a community council a month ago, and it was granted in council, and then the mayor held it, which means that it wasn't granted. He held it to the next meeting. So we've now, uh, so in, in the meantime, you know, uh, on Friday when I found out about this, I called the mayor's office, and I said, listen, you, 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 we, we're going to have to fire everybody and close the site. I mean, like, We've already put up the jersey barriers and the signs going up. And they said, well, okay, well, if that's happening, don't stop. We'll let you know what to do. Then Tuesday morning, the uh, city shows up and says, rip down your hoarding, remove the jersey barriers. You can't do this. You don't have a permit, which is completely counter to what I was told on Friday, which was relax, don't do anything yet until we tell you. So the mixed message, no real communication between the councillor's office, our office, the city's office, and our office in terms of a clear flow of information. And then the mayor goes on television and shows my crane, and I'm the bad guy for closing traffic. But, and then the other thing I find interesting is that, uh, uh, and by the way, we had been assured of this all the way through by, you know, not the mayor's office, but the, the people that grant these within the works departments and so on. It was never an issue, right? Never one issue. And we also had been promised an earlier date for council, and they kept they kept postponing putting us on the on the council uh, highlights to be heard that day, right? And then we then it came to the exhibition. Other things we got bounced to another council meeting. But interestingly enough, what was said by the mayor and and his crew is that we need to do it the way New York City does it, which is they don't do this in New York City. That they make the developers find a different way to do it, which is complete hogwash. So we went on the internet and we found, uh, you know, hundreds of examples of how they do it in New York City, and they shut down lanes left, right, and center. In fact, we actually have a, a sketch of the city of New York currently with lane shutdowns because of development, and it looks like varicose veins on a leg. Yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's the only way you can do it. There's no science way to do it otherwise, you know? And uh, anyway, I, I think that it's unfortunate because of the lack of communication that's taken place between us and the city. And this is one of the problems with, I've told you about all this stuff that we do with the city, the struggle we have. You know, what I was told by the, by the, the mayor's office is that the, the works department or the people responsible for issuing these permits said that we wouldn't be held up if it was held for a month. And that's why they did it. But they didn't check because we were actually building the Jersey barriers to protect the, the people walking by on that day. So it actually is now the site's closed. It's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and people can't be employed because you would have started this project. Now. So what, well, we what are the to, next steps now? What well, are the, what, what? Who knows? So we had to, we had to, we had to basically uh, remove all of the form workers, all the steel workers. Jeez. There's, there's an excavation a piece of equipment still there. That's, you know, one guy digging, digging holes, waiting for something to happen. And I've got all my, laborers and all my um, my management staff were paying there but everyone else is gone off to other jobs the crane is sitting idle costs us twenty five thousand dollars a month for that crane to sit there and you know this is all this is all just a silly waste of time and money because nobody communicated about the reality of of not being able to do this I'm getting so and, angry you know. for you <laughs> and what was frustrating what i find frustrating is that there's there's not a lot of outlets for you you know there's not a lot of places to call 
to get relief from this. And, and you have to escalate it. And it becomes nasty and there's no reason for it. Me is the layman in all this, Brad. Uh, Brad J. Lamb, by the way, torontocondos.com. And if you want anything like sold or purchased, just go there. they got great realtors and all that stuff. And, you know, look for his new developments, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. torontocondos.com. <laughs> For me as a layman, the way I see it also, with increasing house prices happening every month and condo prices going up every month, that the more you have a delay, the more that you're delayed in making great affordable homes for people still because of this time that at least we can get in there now. If this delays you next year, it's only going to help. I mean, prices are only going to go up, so it's going to hurt people buying. That's what I would think also. Do you know what happened today? Tell me. I raised prices $200,000 today. Because you have to make up for those costs. Yeah, so it's going to cost at a minimum, at a minimum. Listen. That's first thing. And, and, and that means the next, uh, we've got 50 or 40 units left. The next 40 people are paying, you know, an extra $5,000 when they didn't have to. Yep. Like this stuff isn't absorbed by the project. It can't be, right? It, it gets absorbed by the consumers who buy the product. And it's a, just, a, you know, when, when we're talking about trying to find a way of, of, of finding affordable housing in the city, we go ahead and do stuff like this without any consultation to the stakeholder, which is me. That building is $100 million being dropped into the city. We do that every six months here. $200 million to $300 million a year dropped into the city. All the jobs, all the money, all the taxes, everything. Provincial, you know, HST. No consultation, no phone call, no asking us, hey, um, you know, is there any other way to do this? Nothing. They always Zero. go after the developer, don't they? I don't think they always do. But in this particular case, it's probably a misunderstanding. But we, what I would appreciate is a clear path of dialogue that we can see our way through this. And, and unfortunately, you know, we're now being promised some form of consultation at some point in the future. But this costing jobs and money. Wow. Yeah, every day is probably $25,000 of money just pissed in the wind for this. And, and this is the thing. There is no other way. To build. No way to build it other than the Magic. way we're doing it. If we had magic, <laughs> I wish I was magic, I would hover concrete trucks over the site and pour from the sky. You know? I feel like if anyone's ever going to do that, it might be you one day. Like, <laughs> you're going to lift some concrete trucks. What's going on with this 15% tax that they're considering bringing to Ontario that they're doing for foreign investment in, in, in uh, B.C.? I'm sure everyone's tired of that, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't think it's coming in Toronto. I, I think a lot of the things that have happened with housing the last two weeks has just been completely asinine. I don't fully... Uh, understand the the idea behind it, but but possibly there's a bigger plan at, at work that I'm not aware of. But um, the 15 percent tax would be a, a a colossal mistake. It would be a, a depression causing move in in Canada. The the Ontario economy would would cavitate and collapse, and it would the ripple effects would be across the country. It'd be a disaster, and no one's going to do that. I don't think anyone here is going to do that. The economy of BC is different, but I don't think anyone's going to do that here. Um, the uh, There's all these new mortgage rules. And actually, i got to find an email because someone had a question for you that I want to ask you. Uh, the, the new mortgage rules are coming into effect this Monday. Um, can you explain them again for people? Because from what I understand it is this, is that you used to be able to be qualified for a mortgage at whatever the interest rate is now, like 2.25 or 2.5 or something percent. Yes. And now they're qualifying uh, first-time homeowners to, to add that they, they would have to afford like a 4.5% interest rate, something like that for a 400000 plus mortgage or something. Right. Is that, am, I, am I kind of getting the numbers sort of right? Yeah, yeah. And so there's, there's, a, there's a word called stress test, which I, I fucking hate that word. Okay. It's such a bullshit word. My wife gives me that all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably real in that case. But, <laughs> but no, it's, it's they, you know, bankers <laughs> like to have these catchy words for stuff. Yeah. So this, here's the stress test. So right now, if you can afford to buy a home at current interest rates at 2.3% or whatever they are, they want to see that if rates go up, you'll be able to handle the extra cost. So they're doing a stress test at 4.64%, which is the now posted bank rate. So that extra 2.3%, they want to see if you can afford it. And if you can't, then you can't, you can't uh, borrow the money you want. So what it's doing effectively is it's saying, let's say you can actually afford in today's rate environment to buy a 300000 or have a $300,000 mortgage. We're not going to let you have that mortgage. We're not going to qualify you. You can have two fifty. dollars because you, you, you qualify for the stress test at 250. So what it's doing is it's taking hundreds of thousands, I believe hundreds of thousands of first time buyers uh, over the next several years out of the marketplace and it will transport them into the future at some point when the dream is they'll be able to buy something. 
lots of people will be taken out of the system forever because you'll f be forever behind the eight ball. You never have enough money to get what you need. <sighs> And I'm not just taking your side because you're Brad J. Lamb and you're here and we work with you and stuff. But uh, I remember how much of a struggle it was for me to get my first place. But I also remember knowing that I did not want to blow fucking money away by renting and renting and renting and just throwing. And all I see out of this now, and again, from a layman's perspective, uh, perspective Brad, is that it, it's going to help other people still afford to buy these, but put other people in renting situations yes. the rest of their life. Yes. And, and then they're never going to get equity within their homes because that's really how I've made probably 75% of my income in this world. Yes, but here's, yeah. the, here's the but. And this okay. is, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with this as a move. I, I don't have enough information. Uh, you know, the finance minister may have a bit more. Um, but here's the thing. The concern is that over the next... Um, zero to five years, interest rates may go up 2%. Okay. And if you have a mortgage now and you can afford it and rates go up 2%, can you afford it then? And mm. if you can't afford it, what's that going to do to the economy and the real estate economy, which is the most important economy to a consumer? It's their bulk of their money. So what they're trying to do is protect the economy and protect people from themselves, really. So the question I have, though, is, is you know, are people not adults and can't they do that themselves? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the right answer is. I would prefer, though... If I was the Minister of Finance or the, is that what he's called? The Minister of Finance? Yeah. Bill Morneau, I think that's his title. What I would do is I would have done something, but I would not have done it to that extent. I probably went on halfway and said, let's add a, uh, let's take the you know, the bank rate and, and minus 1% and do a middle ground thing, which would be. They're almost going worst case scenario. As they're a, going Armageddon. Two points in, in three or four years is a big change in the world's interest rates. I don't think that's going to happen. Huh. I don't know. Sounds like who knows? They might be protecting their own interests, but it's it's, it's like an, it's just. Uh, I feel bad for people. You know, they they, they you can't get. It. They're making it harder to get into homes. It's, well, the they, other thing is they're making yeah. it harder for small financial institutions to stay competitive. So they've more or less forced all of the the uh, the non banks. I mean, if you look at all the stocks of the non bank lenders, they've all dropped twenty percent in the last five or six days. Huge stress because they're going to lose a huge amount of lending. Ah, I never even thought about that. Um, here's a quick question from, uh, his name is Rick. I won't use his last name because I don't know. Uh, here's a question for Brad. My credit score has been murdered. I've gone through two divorces, a car repo, student loans, several credit cards delinquent uh, and closed and sent to collections. I desperately want out of my parents' home, yet I'm paycheck to paycheck and can't seem to catch up. Where do I even begin to repair my credit? Uh, and then he just started talking about there's a builder in Florida that offers like, I don't know, I guess he's considering moving that offers some rebates to move into new homes. Um, should he take advantage of something like that? He's worried. Um, when should I task abandon all that type of offer? I don't even really know what that part okay, is. Well, but. moving to Florida doesn't seem like an option because you need to be an American okay. to get a job yeah. down there. So okay. that's not that make any sense. But what I would say is what he should do is, is King West Financial is my mortgage company. And if he calls King West Financial, and uh, the number, should I say the number? Yeah, give it a yeah, for sure. It's uh, three one, uh, sorry, 416-368-5262 or, or 368-LAM. And he asks for somebody named Dwayne. Dwayne will take him through step-by-step step how to fix his credit. We can fix his credit in a year. Okay. Not perfectly, but enough to get a mortgage. Good to know. Uh, uh, it's, you know, this is... I'm getting a lot of great feedback on this segment, and I know we work on Canada Laughs, but this is the stuff they don't teach you in schools. This is the stuff that you need to learn, and you're our very own dragon, Brad J. Lamb. And and uh, I, I, I'm just excited to, for the Blue Jays to, to beat that that team that we can't pronounce. Or yes, say, <laughs> it'll be fun. we gotta, we got to have a beer and watch it. You're going you to watch all the games? You know, I was going to go to Cleveland yeah. to watch it, but I have my, my daughter this uh, this weekend. So hey, I be honest, we're going to fly private? We're going to just going to push right you know, over I, there? I, you know, I don't fly private. You don't fly private? No. no yeah. I'm too cheap to do that. Are you? Okay. I do fly business class, but I won't I won't fly private. All right. Not, not is yet. That, is that a really, is that like a crazy amount of, I've done it yes, a couple times from some big wigs who brought me, but. It is, yeah. So is to it, give an idea, to, yeah. go to, to go to New York and back in a citation, let's say. Um, is is going to be like twenty five grand, thirty grand, just to do a quick turnover. Yeah, Every, They're really. Right. Yep, it's very, Jesus. very, very expensive. Yeah, that's crazy. So if you take five or six people, yeah. then it's it's still crazy. It's maybe five thousand a person, but it's still a lot wow. when you can go for I don't know six hundred dollars in Porter. One of my buddies who's yeah. flown me twice must be super rich. Okay. <laughs> he probably is. Yeah, he's I didn't realize how rich yeah. he was. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he does it all the time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Brad J. Lamb, thank you. Go to torontocondos.com for all your information and uh, anything you need when it comes to your real estate needs. 
The Todd Shapiro Show. Turn up your speakers, especially if you're over 65. Sirius XM 168, Canada Laughs.